All right, boys and girls, we're up to part five, I guess, of this uh, RV porting series. Let's go. All right, that's pretty close. They're all matched up now. Pretty good. So we're going to remove. We're going to remove this template now, and then we're going to go into the port and sort the bottom of the divider out and start blending the rest and also getting the roof profile right um, so if we have a look here hmm, gotta fix that up fix the sidewalls up you can see that go from the top to that side that side and uh, remember to use the old faithfuls. These will help you every time. So you can do left to right, and then you know what's what. So then you can go right through the whole port, find all your tight spots or loose spots. All right. All right, so we've taken the plate off now, and we're going to go in and tidy the divider up. But I've noticed one thing. Whoever's ported this has, has done the cardinal sin as far as they've trenched right up through here. Um, the camera really can't see it, but there's an actual trench that goes up each side of the guide here It's actually worse on this side than that side um, I don't think there's much on that side, but yeah, they've actually you can see there's a little line there and then it drops in So what they've done is they've run the cutter up and down there and instead of keeping it on the divider They've pushed it into the floor. This way you got to be very careful getting a bit going back and forth. You're better off working it this way, especially if you're a beginner. Until you're experienced and you know how to keep the load on the wall or off the floor or whatever, uh, try not to do this method when porting. Um, shape it and, and work in layers in the way and then come up here and so on. Um, but yeah, that's what they've done. So we're gonna get in there, try and tidy it up. You'll see as I port, it'll highlight that area. And I'm still on with no oil. You can see my cutter isn't even touching there. That's how low the trench is. And the line goes right up inside there. You can see that line. So we're going to have to try and sort that out. So we are a little bit lucky in this case because I have to lift this roof because we've got to blend the window in, which means the roof's going to come down. And what they've done here is they've sort of radius the whole lot, which is sort of wrong. We want to go in straight and then start the turn before the guide. Just in this area here, you can really feel it. it. Goes all the way, all the way to the fucking guide. Wow. This one's not as bad, so the consistency is absolutely fucking terrible on this. But we'll fix it up.
There's only so much I can do. And this is a great example why CNC will never do as good because that port's nearly on size. This wall's almost parallel, but that wall isn't even close to parallel. So this wall comes in and curves out, and this wall's almost dead straight. But the CSA is now almost on target. And that's the key with hand porting versus CNC. C and C would go and rip that whole wall out. Then it wouldn't touch certain areas of the casting because there's no casting there to machine. And we end up with a bigger cross-sectional area one side than the other and more area that we don't need. It's where if this wall's slightly bent a little bit, that wall's slightly straight. If the CSA is right, the airspeed's going to be right. Small little changes aren't going to bother us as long as we don't have sharp edges and uh, steps and stuff like that. And this is why a hand-ported uh, OEM cylinder head, especially in the twin cam market, should always be able to beat a CNC head. In peak numbers, in boost threshold, meaning where they start to boost so hand porter generally always boosts earlier than a sand seed head and in average numbers throughout the horsepower curve so and and that's a great example as you can see that wall is nearly i'd say about 60 thou that way compared to this wall yet the cross-sectional area is almost bang on now now i've set this on the other ports so that so i know my width and that, that's almost perfect now. So I need about 10 thousandths taken out of each wall. And this should be absolutely perfect. Because that's where it just goes in on the other ports. I'm not showing you that. But anyway. Uh, and, and I still haven't thinned the divider out yet. But I'm trying to get the walls right. And I'll get the divider bang in the middle. As I said, if it snakes that way slightly or snakes that way slightly. As long as the CSA is right. That's far more important than anything. You can have two walls at two different shapes, but the key here is the CSA. The key is what's going to control, uh, the, the CSA, sorry, is what's going to control how fast that air goes through. So if we have two different CSAs, not only we create a pressure differential, one's going to go faster than the other. There's going to be all sorts of problems. And we're, we're not helping that natural VE profile, which is why we port cylinder heads in the first place. So... Measure as you go, and don't be afraid if they're not exactly the same. You look at the two J's, see, at least in the RB, they consider this a symmetrical head. But when you go to two J's and stuff like that, one port's coming in that way, one port's coming in that way. So, again, you're never going to get them the same, but as long as you get the CSA profile, the airspeed the same from port to port to port. And the best way to get the airspeed the same is... The same diameter same size because everything is already set the piston the stroke the rpm your cam timing you can't really change any of that it's all set so once we set this part all the same we know the velocity is going to be the same through the cylinder heads from port to port Again, even if they're slightly different, and I've said this time and time again, when you look at the core shift, some molds are up, some are down, some are left, some are right. Um, compensate for them as best you can, but don't go hogging a wall all the way out and making that area bigger just to get it looking straight. Uh, you, you've gained nothing, and in fact, you've gone backwards, and, and it really is a newbie uh, mistake, so try not to fall into that mistake.
All right, we'll keep going. Well, we'll call it a date, guys, and we'll get on the next one. Uh, I think we're going to hit the whiteboard, and, and I'll break down um, the CSA and, and, and shapes a little bit more, so hopefully you understand it. Catch us.